In this episode, we're going to look at taking a new approach to an old tradition, varnishing. Varnish is one of those things that, if it's done properly, it's, uh, it, it's a sight to see. I mean, it looks absolutely beautiful. Now, if it's done poorly, six months down the road, really almost anything looks better. And the, the big difference between getting that finish that has the wow factor and the finish that's just kind of, eh, is generally speaking, it's the number of coats that have been laid up. Now, with a traditional varnish job, you're usually talking about anywhere from minimum five coats, uh, preferably closer to eight or nine coats. And as far as the work that's involved in between each of those layups, you're, you're sanding it down, you're cleaning it, you're tacking it off, and you're, uh, you're getting things prepped for that next layup. And when you kind of uh, figure that in with the number of coats that you have to do and how many times you have to go through this process, it, it can take quite a while. I mean, it's a pretty labor-intensive thing. And honestly, it's why most people hire someone else to do it. Now, in today's uh, show, we're gonna be taking a, a different approach on this. And rather than going start to finish with a traditional varnish, we're going to be doing all of our buildup coats with an epoxy and, 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 doing our, and finishing off with a traditional varnish. Now, the advantages of doing this is uh, with starting off with, with an epoxy, you can essentially get almost all of your buildup coats done in one day. As long as you have anywhere from you know, an hour or so, two hours uh, in between coats, you can get uh, two or three coats or, or more, possibly four, depending on how much of a, a big of an area you're doing. You can get all that laid up in a day. Following day, come back and give it a give it a good knockdown with some sandpaper, and now you're ready to start varnishing. And at that point, you're talking two to three coats of varnish, and you're done. And you're going to have the appearance of eight to ten coats of a, of a traditional varnish job, and that same level of protection. And it's you're not going to have anywhere near the amount of time involved. And it's, uh, as you're gonna see here shortly, the, uh, the results are, they're, they're, they're absolutely incredible. So that being said, let's, uh, let's get started and uh, kind of show you how to do this. So before we get started, let's do a quick overview of the materials that we're going to be using for this project. Now to start, because we're going to be working with some chemicals, we wanna make sure that we're taking care and protecting ourselves by wearing some rubber gloves, which we have right there along with some acetone, some paper towel, and a clean mixing cup with some mixing sticks and a disposable brush. Now the epoxy that we're going to be using is West System and it's their standard 105 resin along with their 207 special hardener. Now one of the characteristics that makes that particular hardener so special is that when, the, when these two components are mixed and they cure, they cure water clear meaning that there is uh, absolutely no tinting or discoloration that happens when that material is applied to the wood. Uh, another nice feature of that hardener is that it has some UV blockers or UV inhibitors built into it. And for this kind of project where we're using this as a base coat underneath a traditional spar varnish, uh, it's, it's really ideal. It's going to preserve the finish and make it last that much longer before any kind of attention or maintenance coats are going to be needed. So I believe with, uh, with that being said, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get this teak prepped out and let's get to it. So the first thing we're going to do is for prepping this, uh, this teak is we're gonna give it a wipe down with some acetone. And the reason for doing that is uh, teak is one of those woods that naturally contains a lot of oils. And depending on what you're looking to do with the, uh, with the teak here, it can either be a good thing or a bad thing. If you're looking to leave it in its natural state, meaning not put any kind of a coating or finish on, uh, then that, that it's a, those oils are a wonderful thing because that's really what preserves the wood and keeps it from rotting. Now, if you're looking to coat it like we are here, then those oils are not your friend. They, uh, they sit on the surface and they prevent 
really the, any kind of finish from being able to absorb into the grains and, and get a good bond with the wood. So by wiping it down, we're able to remove that, that top layer of oil so that our finish can soak in and get a better hold of, uh, of the wood here. So now with the teak prepped, we're going to go ahead and start mixing up our epoxy. Now, I'm not exactly sure how much I'm going to need, so I'm going to do it in small amounts and do, I'm probably going to do about four pumps uh, for, the, for each batch to kind of see what kind of distance I get out of this. And mixing of this epoxy is really easy. They, you, you buy these metered pumps and they pre-measure, depending on the, uh, the hardener that you're using, they pre-measure the amount that's dispensed. So I'm busy talking here and I think this is my fourth pump. So, but anyway, so it's uh, four pumps of the resin four pumps of the hardener, and you've got the perfect ratio. So I have the first coat on this piece, and it turns out that four pumps for this size of, uh, size of plank was about perfect. I put it on by brush, it would probably be quicker and a little less hassle as far as worrying about bristles falling out if you were to actually roll this on with a, with a, with a roller first, then tip it off with a brush, but um, I don't have one handy right now, so I'm brushing it on. So I'm gonna repeat the same process on the second plank, and I'm gonna let it sit for Two, two hours, two or three hours, I'm gonna put a heat lamp on to kind of speed up the process a little bit. And I'll come back, put on another coat, and you know, I'll kind of gauge. If it, if it looks like I've got a good film thickness, then I'll probably leave it and let it cure overnight, and then sand it down to prep it for some varnish. So I had a little bit of a hang up after I laid my first coat up. I had to open up my big shop door, and when I did, I had a big gust of wind that came in and kicked up a bunch of sawdust. And it uh, went all over my fresh wood. So <laughs> rather than go ahead, rather than putting on another, another coat on here and, and sealing those uh, wood, that wood dust in, I decided to let it cure. So since, I, since it has cured, I need to go ahead and sand this back down. Uh, one, to prep it for the next coat of epoxy, but more importantly, or just as importantly, I, I wanna get all these specks out of here. So I'm gonna give this a quick sanding with some 80 grit and give it a wipe down, and then we're gonna put on our second coat of epoxy. So I've gone through and sanded everything down, and uh, came through, wiped them down, cleaned them, got all the dust off, and uh, I've got my epoxy mixed up here, and I'm gonna start brushing on the second coat. And when I'm putting this one on, especially on the top surface, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna flood it on really good. I'm not, really, I'm not concerned at all about runoff on the sides. I can just sand all that off. But I wanna make sure that I've got a good thick base up on the top. So here I have the second coat of epoxy laid up on the wood. And let me zoom in a bit here so you can get a better look at how it, how it appears. And it gives a nice clean finish. The teak itself gives it a bit of a nice, rich, brown, kind of amberish color. So we'll let this set up overnight. And then I think tomorrow, I've got enough, uh, thick enough base on here, I should be able to just sand this back down with some 220 and then start the varnishing process.